Food is a scarce resource. It's not always available. It makes sense to keep some aside, especially when the supply is high. It's a basic survival instinct, I think. How a community preserves food can determine the survival of the subsequent generations. Different preservation methods have different challenges. Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. In Kenya, post-harvest losses can go as high as 30%. Considering the current state of economy, high cost of inputs, then we can agree this figure is too high and unacceptable. In this video, I will focus on cereals and legumes to be specific. If you are a farmer who is producing beans, I am sure you will appreciate what I am talking about. I know you can use chemical dust to preserve your produce, especially the large scale farmers and commercial cereal stores. So what if you have harvested few kilos from your garden? or you have decided to go organic with no chemicals or even the few kilos on your kitchen shelves have already started being attacked by weevils how do you stop this destruction immediately or even permanently i read somewhere that the life cycle of these weevils start right from the farm even before harvesting that explains why you get the insects multiplying in the store even a month later, once the conditions are right, the eggs hatch and the larvae eat their way out of the seeds. And this leads to widespread destruction of the stored seeds. Just like the Trojan horse story in history, remember? Man, I loved history lessons back in school. Have you read about the Masada takeover? Very interesting. Anyway, so much for history. One day, I was preparing some dengue to cook. While washing them, I noticed that the weevils could survive under the water for more than 20 minutes. Can't believe these insects can do that. Yet, I can't stay under swimming pool water for more than even two minutes. I stood there watching how each weevil drowned until the last one died. And no. It's not what you're thinking. I don't have a mental problem or a condition. I was just simply amused by how long they took to die. Then an idea came to mind. If they can survive that long in cold water, can they do the same in hot water too? And for how long? What if I set up the experiment and find out how that works out? If this works out, this can be a simple solution to some common food losses in Kenyan kitchens. So I decided to boil water and try out my hypothesis. Hot water can be used to prolong the shelf life of dengue in Kenyan kitchens. Hmm, how does that sound? I had put the dengue in the gunia to allow water to get inside. I dipped the produce in the boiling water for around one minute and then I took it out for drying just for a short time you don't need to cook them there was uniform coverage and i could tell this from the hot temperatures the next step was to spread the produce in the sun to dry immediately i spread the seeds in a thin layer to allow for quick drying now the seeds did not take long to dry in the february sun in fact by day two they felt dry but I stopped the process after five days nevertheless. Green gram is a relatively small seed and shouldn't be troublesome to dry. This experiment is for green grams. I wouldn't advise the same for maize. Maize is a special animal altogether. I am not sure if rewetting the seed is safe or even encouraged. I know that hot water has also been used to preserve green leafy vegetables too. That also deserves a video too, huh? I think God has blessed Kenya. Climate challenges are real, but we have to adopt survival skills at a personal level too. First of all, we need to feed ourselves as a country. Preservation and storage of food is a basic survival skill, if you ask me. Natural disasters like drought are as old as humankind. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 37, there is a story of Joseph and his brothers who had sold him out 
the same brothers traveled all the way to Egypt, begging him to sell food to them. You control food, you control a lot in the society. It's a basic need. That must have been a humbling experience for those guys, I think. Imagine you sell out a guy that you don't like, and after some time in the future, you find yourselves kneeling before him, begging for survival, thinking of the poor choices you made in life. Anyway, after drying, I collected and stored the produce in a bag. Since then, I've used the produce for the past seven months with no special treatment or new pest attack. I am now sure that hot water can also be a solution for small quantities at home. How about that? Now, I've been talking about crop pests. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Plantix. Plantix is a free software that helps farmers to diagnose common pests and diseases. You download and install the app from the Google Play Store. It's this application that you use to take pictures of suspected pests and diseases and get accurate diagnosis. You also get to interact with an active online community of farmers and extension experts to share farming experiences worldwide. No one would have imagined that extension services could be easily accessible in your phone for free in Kenya. Download and try it today. You will like it. Thank you for watching. God bless you and see you in the next video.